Fortnite has recently brought back the character Midas, giving him his own game mode and several story quests about his return. And with the return of Midas, it has me asking one question. Who is this? Like, really, who is this guy and why is he so important? He's not in the battle pass, he hasn't been in any of the trailers. Sure, he has his own game mode, but that really doesn't tell us anything about him. What makes him so special? I know with me saying this, it has a lot of long-time Fortnite players screaming right now. It's Midas, the leader of Shadow! He's from the Chapter 2 Season 2 Battle Pass! Did you not play that season? And the answer is no. I didn't. My first Fortnite season was Vibin back in Chapter 3 Season 3, a full year after Midas came out. And Fortnite has done nothing to help catch new players up to speed. I say newer with air quotes because I've been playing the game for about two years now and I still struggle to understand what's happening. Despite what you may think, Fortnite has a story, but it does a really bad job in telling it. And there is zero way for new players to catch up with what's happening. The only way to learn is to do wiki dives or watch convoluted lore videos. Like what is this, Dark Souls? Do you want to know how bad Fortnite storytelling is? Who's this? Like, exactly who is this? Well, his name is the Ageless, and all the descriptions make him sound like a generic king, and nowhere does he tell you that this is the main antagonist of Fortnite. Yeah, this is Jeno. You can't just add this guy to a random battle pass and not tell people this. This is the information we need to know. It's vital. It's vital. You need this for survival. Oh, but Kuzzle, that's not Jeno. That's a snapshot of him. Yeah, you're right. That would be good information to know if the game told me it. Also, what the hell is a snapshot? And while we're at it, what is the zero point and what is a looper? There's no Persona 3 dictionary where I can just learn what all the jargon means means, Fortnite tells you none of this information. And again, the only way to learn this is to do wiki dives, several of which have a disclaimer telling you that they contain fan theories and are not 100% factual, or the other way, which is watching lore videos that got all their information from the untrustworthy wikis. Did you know Tropicana basically invented brush? Tropicana! <laughs> <laughs> However, I feel like there is a fairly easy way to fix all this. Along with Chapter 5, Fortnite announced that they're working on other game modes alongside Battle Royale. While all these are fairly basic little game modes, this does add in an opportunity for them to add another game mode, one that is a dedicated story mode for Fortnite. I know some people will say Fortnite has a story mode with Save the World, and those people clearly haven't played Save the World. It's its own unique story that has nothing to do with the Battle Royale story that everyone cares about, with several characters that I bet most players haven't even heard of. I'm talking about a mode where you can learn the Battle Royale story and catch up on what's happening. Yes, I know, Battle Royale has story quests, but most of the time the Battle Royale gets in the way of the story. This season, they added in characters with dialogue options that explain their character and let players know what's happening. That's cool, I like this, but it's really hard for me to read this text while I'm getting shot at by people that are actually playing the game. Battle Royale is a... Well, Battle Royale, you're meant to fight other players and be competitive. It's not really a place for character building. And while the Battle Royale gets in the way of the story, there's also parts where the story gets in the way of the Battle Royale. A lot of these quests require you to land at a specific location to talk to someone, making these locations hotspots with a high amount of players landing there, and also creating a perfect location for players to camp these spots for easy kills. So that's why I think Fortnite needs a dedicated story mode. The Battle Royale modes are fairly limited in the story that they can tell, because they need to focus on being a competitive game first. Take for example the Rescue Peely quest from Chapter 5 Season 1. In Battle Royale, there isn't any way to really have a dedicated quest to rescue Peely. So instead, we were given a few quests where we had to eliminate guards and the bosses on the map, and after that, we just got a load screen with Jonesy carrying Peely. No cutscene, no fanfare, we just got a JPEG we can look at. Cool. Not the most exciting thing, but it's all we could really get. However, if Fortnite had a story mode, you could have a full-on heist to rescue Peely, having to fight off swarms of guards while protecting Jonesy while he carries him, even letting Jonesy have a heart-to-heart -heart with his only friend. A much better way to end the hype around Peely going missing. Okay, with all that said, what exactly do I mean by story mode? What I'm asking for actually isn't too dissimilar to Save the World. It's basically a game mode where you can go back and learn the story of Fortnite by experiencing it through different replayable challenges. 
Like, I'm not asking for a big open world populated by cities. No, I'm more so asking for a list of levels divided by seasons, similar to how a fighting game would display its story progress, or something like the overworld in Mario. That way you aren't limited to playing missions that are about the current season, and players can go back and experience the older seasons for themselves. This also adds in a fun way to revisit old maps. Yeah, yeah, Fortnite OG was a massive hit or whatever, but not every map is as loved as the Chapter 1 map. I adore the random hodgepodge nature of the Chapter 4 map, all the different areas having super distinct colors and all the random events that would happen. But while I love this chapter, I just don't see a Chapter 4 revisit being as successful as Fortnite OG. However, a story mode is a perfect way to revisit these islands. You can also give players the old weapons without worrying about them breaking the game balance. I miss the shockwave hammer and the Excalibur rifle, and in a story mode like structure, you can give players these weapons without needing to keep a meta in check. Speaking of things being more fun in a story mode instead of battle royale, boss fights. Now, to be fair, I do like the boss fights in Battle Royale, but that comes with the added pressure of having random players attack you in the middle of it. Also, again, there's only so much you can do with a boss fight in Battle Royale. If a player is able to fight a boss fairly late into the match, there really isn't much of a challenge because they have the supplies to melt the boss into butter like Mono Iwata. But in a story mode boss fight, devs can design an encounter with a much more interesting concept. For example, you could give the player a limited amount of ammo and have them have to kill minions to collect more. Or you can have a fight on Mega City where the player only has access to the kinetic katana. Or you could have a fight outside of Butterborn where they got the quickest triggers in the whole dang west. We got gunfights ever or not. Also, to clarify, when I say things like missions or levels, I'm not asking for anything too complicated. I compare them to the missions in GTA, where they lock off part of the map and have you complete challenges with some optional objectives here and there. I'm not asking for anything too elaborate here. I know I said that this would be similar to Save the World, but I do want it to play a little different. Try to make it less repetitive than Save the World. I don't want another 2,000 missions of fighting off hordes of monsters. Some of that is fine, but I would like some variety with these missions. It's also a good idea having a variety of missions that are both zero build and build mode. Personally, I'm not a big fan of building, and I assume highly skilled players are just gonna box in all the enemies and optimize the fun out of it. Try to keep both sides of the fan base happy, so that way they don't make fun of each other as much. Now, I've talked a lot about gameplay with this theoretical story mode, and I haven't talked that much about how it helps with the story itself. The main thing with this mode is that it gives the story a chance to breathe. A lot of the times when the story asks you to talk to someone, most players just spam through all the text so they don't get attacked by surprise. However, a story mode doesn't have that same pressure and allows players to slow down and read some of the dialogue that your writers have made without speeding through it. I know there's also been a few times where there's been voice acting to help with these issues, but again, I would like to focus on what they're saying without fear of being caught by surprise. This gives an opportunity to actually learn about the characters that you have. One of the biggest issues I have with this game is that you keep adding cool characters and then doing nothing with them. For example, have you noticed the similarities between Lorenzo and Renzo? Lorenzo is missing a knee pad on his left leg, and Renzo's left leg is all messed up. Or how they have similar alternate styles where they both wear coats. Or how their names are Renzo and La Renzo. You want to know more about these two? Too bad, because that's all the game tells you about them. How about Era from the same pass? She has two styles based off of the past and the future, and a time travel themed emote and accessories. This character could have a cool connection to Lorenzo's situation, except for the fact that she never says a word! Seriously, it's like the only storytelling we get in this game is through cosmetics and loading screens that don't really explain what's happening. Like, we still don't know why the society kidnapped Peely or how this ties into stealing from the Greek gods. Wait, does it have to do with the golden bananas that are on the map? Were they gonna turn Peely into a giant golden banana? God, I wouldn't need to do dumb speculations like this if you would just tell me what's happening! Fortnite has a lot of cool characters, and adding a story mode, it lets you develop these characters. By having a game mode like this, there's less of a chance for minor plot inconsistencies. Like, it would be weird if the game added in a group of vampire hunters, and then later on in that same season added in an antagonist that was a vampire, and then never having the two of them interact. That would be weird. Sure hope Fortnite doesn't do anything like that. I sure hope nothing like that happens! This could be used to help boost characters that didn't have much of a time to shine. 
like making the Herald an actual villain instead of a random boss on the map that just kind of stood there for a full season. There's also so many fun little details that you can talk about in this mode, like who were all the seven before they joined, or having a chance to learn about seasonal villains, or showing how in Neo City they don't dance. They just do the thunder. If you couldn't tell by my constant references through this video, I actually really like the story that Fortnite Battle Royale has. There's so many unique and interesting characters that Fortnite just doesn't do anything with, or when they do use them, they use them in some of the most bizarre ways, like having Eve be relevant 9 months after the battle pass she was available in. Having a story mode helps put all these characters together and helps people not only understand what's happening, but also get more attached to these characters. And you know what you can do when you have people attached to these characters, right? You sell skins, baby! I feel like I shouldn't need to explain this, but if you add in a way for people to get attached to these characters in-game, they'll be more likely to buy skins of these characters in the item shop. Also, and I know people will complain about this, gives a good excuse for you to sell old Battle Pass skins. They could be rewards for going through every mission in a season or doing all the extra objectives. I know a good amount of players don't want these skins to be available again because it would, quote, ruin the value of their Fortnite account, and to that I say, please save your gatekeeping for the shotgun. Stop and think for a second. Fortnite has been around for almost 7 years now, and let's say they continue to work on the game for another 7, 14 years in total. If they never add in a way to get these old skins, there will be Fortnite players that never had the chance to get these skins because these skins were released before they were born. Does that sound fair to you? Listen, you don't need to bring back every single Battle Pass item. Like, oh no, we'll never be able to get the piping hot emoji ever again. Uh, oh no, such a shame. But having some way to get these skins and cosmetics again would fit perfectly with the story mode. It's also a good way to profit from this mode. I don't know how you would do that exactly. Like, would you sell them per season or per chapter? Look, I'm not here to figure out details, I'm just here to complain. Look, I'm not asking for them to remove the story from Battle Royale. The current story quests add in some fun challenges for Battle Royale, and I'm sure that some players are not going to enjoy a slower game mode filled with a bunch of characters explaining the story to them like a history class. But if done properly, this could be a fun game mode that new players can use as a fun way to learn the story of the game, and that old players can use as a trip down memory lane. I just think that the story that Fortnite Battle Royale has is good enough that it deserves time to tell it. Anyway, that's it. You can leave.